I'm Hector Douglas from the Kuskokwim campus in Bethel, Alaska, and I will explain a method of image analysis known as maximum likelihood classification, referred to here as MLC. The characteristics of Earth's surface can be studied efficiently with the assistance of satellites such as Landsat. The pixels in satellite images are classified based on spectral signatures of reflected light. The sun is a source of the energy that provides a signal for remote sensing. Radiation from the sun is reflected from the Earth's surface, and when it reaches a satellite, it's split into component bands. Complex arrays of sensors aboard the Landsat satellites record multiple spectral bands from the visible light as well as the infrared. Spectral bands are measured in microns, millionths of a meter. In Landsat 7, three bands comprise a visible spectrum of light, and additional bands comprise the infrared. The red, green, and blue bands comprise a visible spectrum, and these are combined in a composite matrix that is used as a layer in geographic information systems. Information is integrated across bands in the composite layer, and the data from the original cells is retained in a multidimensional space. MLC extracts information from the composite to compute the probabilities of group membership for each cell or pixel in a satellite image. Cells are assigned to the land classes where they belong, based on what seems most likely, hence the name maximum likelihood. Satellite image pixels have numerical values, and these digital numbers can be represented on a color scale. Classified rasters are derived from algorithms that analyze numerical values in a satellite image. The resulting map layer is based on how the cell signatures compare to spectral signatures of land cover classes. These are typical spectral signatures of some land cover classes from the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta of Alaska. MLC uses variances and covariances of the class signatures as a basis for deciding on the cell's membership. Training samples are expected to encompass much of the variability for a cover class. Consider an idealized landscape where there are nine land cover classes distributed in blocks. Each land class is represented by a different color, and individual cells in a class may vary in hue. We train our MLC tool by drawing polygons on the surface of this landscape and lift up representative samples for our spectral library. Our MLC tool compares a library of training samples and classifies land covers accordingly. We will now test our methods to analyze satellite imagery. We begin by collecting satellite imagery of Nelson Island in western Alaska. We can use the Composite Band tool from Data Management in the ArcGIS toolbox to build a composite red-green-blue multi-band raster. The colored rectangles and polygons are the training samples for our spectral library. The MLC tool uses this library to classify the land cover. Here are some of the land cover classes that make up our spectral library. From alpine vegetation in the higher elevations down to the salt marshes and mudflats along the coast. Here is the cover classification achieved by our method. Each color represents a different color cover class. If the confidence is less than 1%, the pixel displays as no data. These cells are shown in red. The output confidence raster shows a number of pixels in each confidence level ranging from 100% at level 1 down to a fraction of a percent at level 14. And these results can be projected in a map to show the distribution of statistical probabilities at the pixel level. The greatest challenge in classification is for those cells that lie between categories. The MLC tool uses a Bayesian classifier to assign weights to classes. In the map that we just viewed, all classes were assigned equal probability. We can change this and weight the classes differently. We can do this by specifying file in the menu entry for a priori probability weighting. 
we will use an ASCII text file with the class designators in the first column and probabilities in a second column. Here's a file with the probabilities for each cover class. Our new classification scheme has resulted in a sharper map with a clearer delineation of cover classes in some areas. This is just a starting point for classifying complex habitat mosaics. A more sophisticated model with elevation, slope, and additional imagery bands can achieve greater resolution. We will now fly 400 miles east to the city of Anchorage to evaluate another approach. In this approach, we will use a proportional weighting method known as sample. The number of cells captured in the training sample will determine the weighting for each class. Larger training samples receive higher weightings. If a commercial office class has twice as many cells in its training sample, its weighting will be twice as high. We will use this method to evaluate cover classes around the city of Anchorage. Representative training samples are collected from a red-green-blue composite. It's possible to create too many cover classes, resulting in a lot of overlap between spectral signatures. For this analysis, nine cover classes are specified, including residential, commercial and office buildings, industrial and retail, and so on. The result is fairly well-defined cover classes, and this classification conforms fairly well to the imagery in our base map of Anchorage. In summary, analysis is performed on multiple spectral bands to discriminate classes of land cover based on spectral signatures. A Bayesian classifier helps resolve ambiguous cases. Measures of statistical confidence help evaluate the quality of the analysis. Thanks to the Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge, the U.S. Geological Survey, and ESRI.